but it's true. Now, when I proposed to my wife, we were in law school, and I said, honey, I come with $120,000 worth of law school debt and a cemetery plot on a mountainside in eastern Kentucky. And I, I, I guess standing here tonight, it's just gotten weirder and weirder, honey. <laughs> but, that, but, but that's what she was getting. Now, that cemetery plot in eastern Kentucky is near my family's ancestral home. And like a lot of people, we came from the mountains of Appalachia into the factories of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Now that's Kentucky coal country, one of the 10. Now it's one of the 10 poorest counties in the entire United States of America. They are very hardworking people and they're very good people. They're the kind of people who would give you the shirt off their back even if they can't afford enough to eat. And our media calls them privileged and looks down on them, but they love this country not only because it's a good idea, but because in their bones they know that this is their home and it will be their children's home and they would die fighting to protect it. That is the source of America's greatness. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the mainstream liberal media having a full-blown meltdown over Trump's vice presidential pick, J.D. Vance's speech last night in which he accepted the nomination to be the vice presidential running mate for uh, President Trump. And I thought that the speech was pretty solid, okay? I think that J.D. Vance is going to have to overcome being somebody that is not necessarily a household name. A lot of people really don't know much of him or his policy positions. But as people get to know him, um, I think that people are going to start to like him, okay? Uh, I think that J.D. Vance is very in touch with the demographic of people that the Trump campaign really, really, really wants to focus heavily on this election. I think that J.D. Vance did a good job doing his speech, connecting that, connecting the dots. And I ultimately hope that it works out, right? I thought that his speech was good. There was nothing inherently divisive or controversial about the speech, except uh, to the mainstream liberal media, uh, it was, right? It was actually a white nationalist speech, according to a deranged MSNBC host. And I want to talk about it because, of course, the mainstream liberal media is melting down over this. They uh, are not fans of J.D. Vance, of course. And if the media, the liberal media, is not fans of J.D. Vance, then that probably is a pretty good thing, right? It's probably a pretty good sign. So I want to talk about it. But before we get into it, I want to let you guys know, if you like my channel and you want to support my channel, you can check out my merch, my Make Biology Great Again shirt that I'm wearing right now, one of my favorite shirts, especially the MAGA Red. I think it looks good on me, so it'll probably look good on you. You can check it out at my website, gformantbcp.com. Get 20% off using discount code TEAMBCP. Roll the clip. Um, I know that <clears throat> there was not the same red meat sort of blood and soil nationalism that you might hear in, I don't know, other parallel universe Republican conventions. But I do think there were some sort of Easter eggs of white nationalism yeah. in the speech. One of the things that stuck out to me was when he started talking about what America is. He said, America is not just an idea. It is a group of people with a shared history and a common future. The thing about America is that it's not a group of people with shared <laughs> history. In mm -hmm. fact, I think a lot of people would argue it's quite the opposite. It's a lot of people with different histories, different heritages. His in-laws don't share the history. <laughs> exactly. And that's the other piece of it. He, ta he goes on, he went along sort of um, a paragraph at least about this plot in eastern Kentucky where his seven gen or six generations of his family are, are buried. And his hope is that his wife and he are eventually laid to rest there and their kids follow them. And I sort of understand the idea of sharing the, the burial plot, but it also is, it reveals someone who believes that the history that the family should inherit, and indeed the history that should be determinative in the, in the story of the Vance family is the, the history of the Eastern Kentucky Vances and not 
the Vances from San Diego, which is where his wife is from and where her Indian parents are from. But in America, it doesn't always have to be the white male lineage that trumps the, the, that defines the family history, that that branch of the tree supersedes all else. And, and, I, and I just think the construction of, of this notion reveals a lot about someone who fundamentally believes in the supremacy of whiteness and masculinity. And it's couched in a sort of halcyon, you know, revisitation of his roots, but it is actually really revealing about what he thinks matters and who America is. And that America is a place for people with his shared Western background. And that is the idea of America. That is the nation of America that he wants to resurrect. I want to yeah, so I want you guys to understand. MSNBC, who apparently was looking for nuggets of white nationalism, okay, uh, Alex Wagner, who is basically a Rachel Maddow flunky, uh, she says, well, I didn't find any overt white nationalism, but I found nuggets, nuggets of white nationalism, guys. Again, looking for racism. This is what they do, right? They look for racism. <laughs> And what she comes up with is that, well, I think that J.D. Vance warning him, his Indian wife, and his kids, mixed kids, to be buried with him and his family, uh, I think that that's white nationalism. And this idea is just so ridiculous for a number of reasons. First and foremost, when you look at how traditionalism works, like traditionally what we've done throughout all of human society, I mean, for the most part, when a woman marries a man, the woman becomes a part of the man's family, right? That's generally kind of how it works. So it would make sense for the woman to be buried with the man and his family and his kids because, again, the woman is now a part of the man's family. Now, I know some people may find that to be controversial, but as a traditionalist, right, generally speaking, that's kind of how it goes, and it's, it doesn't always go like that. Uh, sometimes it just depends on whose family is the closest, right? It just depends, right? But again, in his view, okay, uh, he has a more traditional view and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? Like that's not white nationalism. But again, it shows you how desperate they are to find something when there is nothing there, especially because if you listen to his speech, uh, clearly J.D. Vance is not a white nationalist because first and foremost, he married an Indian woman. He married outside of his race, which is something that I believe a white nationalist wouldn't do or else there is some cognitive dissonance going on there. But he also gave his kids Indian names, which is also something I don't think a white nationalist would do. Um, if you listen to his wife's speech, she talked about how J.D. Vance learned to cook Indian food for her and her parents, which again is something that you know, it seems to me J.D. Vance is in a relationship that the left would typically praise, right? A diverse and inclusive relationship in which you have cultural mixing. Two individuals from distinct backgrounds coming together and making it work, right? Having a family. Again, something typically the left would praise if this were a Democrat. But because it's a Republican, they still try to find a way to say that the man is a white nationalist or that he is trying to play up on white nationalism or use his family to project white nationalism when his family is clearly not a depiction of white nationalism, right? Clearly it's not a good example, okay? Because if, again, if J.D. Vance is a white nationalist, he's doing it wrong, okay? He's very bad at it, okay? But I think the people that are actually bad at their jobs are MSNBC. If their jobs are actually to be journalists, however, because their jobs are not to be journalists, uh, who knows? Maybe the executives at MSNBC believe that uh, their opinion commentators are doing a good job uh, because apparently all it takes to be an opinion commentator for MSNBC is the ability to pull shit out of your ass. Right. Because that is what is being spewed on MSNBC on a nightly basis. Nothing but complete and utter bullshit, which is what that take was, along with many takes on MSNBC over the past few days, especially since uh, the failed assassination attempt on President Trump, right? So um, that is MSNBC. Now we got CNN, Van Jones, who is going to fear monger about J.D. Vance, but he's going to fear monger in a good way because he actually believes that J.D. Vance is a threat to the Democrat Party. Take a look. You know, part of the reason that J.D. Vance matters um, isn't for these kind of short-term electoral calculations. He matters because of what he means to the Republican Party long-term. This is cementing a kind of nationalism. Yeah. Now... Trump, to your point, I agree with you. He, he's an instinctive, impulsive, intuitive nationalist. J.D. Vance is an ideological nationalist. That's a much more dangerous 
virus because he can make this, he can polish this stuff and make it seem palatable to people. He can sell this stuff to Silicon Valley. He can sell this stuff other places. And what it does is it locks the Republican Party on a pathway uh, that I think is dangerous for the world. Again, the Ukrainians are now in deep trouble. Um, NATO is now in deep trouble. Uh, uh, Trump is, he could have gone with, a, with a, a, a Nikki Haley and signaled to the world, hey, listen, I got to give stuff to my base, but I'm not going to abandon the world. This pick is a horror on the world stage. So J.D. Vance matters because he, uh, Donald Trump is pointing the Republican Party in a very scary direction for the long term. Yeah, so that is Van Jones giving accidental praise to uh, J.D. Vance, okay, because he says that J.D. Vance is much more skilled in articulating and advancing his form of nationalism, which I think is a good thing, right? I'm not entirely sure why nationalism is such a dirty word, right? I think that we all should be more nationalist. We should all be more patriotic. I think, if anything, that is what is missing in this country right now is a sense of nationalism, okay? And especially when you talk about a country where you want so much diversity and inclusion, right? This is what the left claim that they want. Well, the only way that that can work is to have a strong sense of nationalism because nationalism or pride in one's country, a strong sense of it is the bond that brings everybody together. It is what makes us American. But if you're telling people that, hey, we need all this diversity and inclusion, but no nationalism, right? It is bad to be proud of your country. Then that's just creates chaos and destruction, right? And again, I think that's what's happening to this country. And I think, again, part of the reason why is because there's not a strong sense of nationalism, right? We need to bring nationalism back. We need to make nationalism cool again. There's nothing wrong with being a nationalist, okay? I mean, but again, they try to make it a dirty word because they don't want anybody to be proud of their country. They don't want anybody to actually, you know, feel like America is a superior idea to the rest of the world and their ideas. And, uh, you know, that's just a part of the globalist agenda. Okay. So Van Jones, who is probably on board with the globalist agenda, is essentially pushing this idea that J.D. Vance is, is a bad person uh, simply because, um of his brand of nationalism. It, it really is kind of stunning. But hey, you know, again, this is par for the course when it comes to the mainstream liberal media. Like I told you guys, to freak out from the mainstream liberal media is honestly a good thing, right? Anytime they're freaking out about somebody that Trump picks um, or somebody that's a part of the Trump team, then you know it's probably a good good sign, right? And um, the freak outs against J.D. Vance are there, right? They're already calling him a white nationalist. They're going to say he's a white supremacist. He's racist. Um, you know, all the things they always say, right? I mean, this is just kind of par for the course when it comes to these individuals. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.